This is the video about my almost wedding that was canceled because of you know what. Quickly, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Amanda. I make videos about Tokyo, Japan. I live in Tokyo, Japan. So if you're interested in that kind of content, and then if you like me <laughs> or this video or the way I make videos, then please consider subscribing. Also, I have a whole playlist of my wedding planning videos, so I'll link that down below as well. I have a lot of different footage that I've collected over some time now, and it's all about me planning this wedding that I wanted for my whole life. It was going to be a small wedding, intimate wedding, but it was going to be everything that Yuji and I had ever wanted. Because it was cancelled and I never saw the fruit, fruition, fruition? <laughs> I never saw the fruition of my wedding, I still wanted to make this video so I could properly remember what it was going to be. I am in no way still sad about my wedding, you guys, so please don't think that because it's now it's been about a year, or it's going to be about a, a year from when it was supposed to happen. Although I appreciate all the love I get from you guys, I in no way am looking for your sympathy or I am in no way looking for attention. This is just a video that I wanted to make so I could properly remember this time and just because I wanted to share it with you guys. You guys were also looking forward to my wedding and I feel like it wouldn't be the proper thing to do to not share with you what it was going to be. So this is for me. This is for you to enjoy a story time video. So grab some coffee, grab some tea, whatever your heart desires, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So because not all of you are familiar with Yuji and I, I will give you guys a little bit of backstory about how we met. I was living in Los Angeles and I was an art director there. Things were not working out well for me and it wasn't the life that I had dreamed of having. And since I had always had a smaller dream of trying to live in Japan, I decided to make the move. And in February of 2016, I left my home and everything I knew and I came to Tokyo, Japan. Now, this is a similar story for most people, but I came here to teach English and I had no experience in teaching English whatsoever. Quickly, I realized that I actually really loved teaching English. I really loved spending time with children and it was just so much fun and a lot less stressful than what I was doing in LA. And what I also quickly came to find out that I really liked was this guy that I was working with. We quickly became friends. He was so good with the children and we had a lot in common. We would go to the park after work and have a couple of drinks because it's one of the best things about Japan is that you guys can drink outside anytime. So we would be able to enjoy a beer at the park after work. We were tired, but we were having fun. We would have great conversations. So if you guys want to like a whole video or story about how you and I met, it's I think it's a really fun story, but I'm not going to get into that story right now. But we quickly got into a relationship. There was a strong magnetic connection with us quickly after dating I think it was only three months we moved in with each other and we just had the best time together going to karaoke going out we were traveling we were seeing all different parts of Japan which is something that he had never done uh, until he met me because Japan was still so fresh to me like I wanted to see everything and I wanted to do it with him we were just always together and it was just so much fun being around him and then in June of 2019 he proposed and it was the most beautiful proposal We were engaged and I was so excited because I get to plan a wedding and you guys don't even know how long I've been planning my wedding on my Pinterest board. The first step was to look at venues but in Japan when you look for a wedding venue you're not only looking for the wedding venue you're looking for the whole package. You're looking at everything else the food they serve, what they can offer and provide for your party. And you aren't allowed to choose anything a la carte. Like for example, you can't choose your florist, you cannot choose your baker, you cannot choose your chef. Everything is included with this package deal. You're really looking for the venue with the best package. 
So after seeing a few wedding venues, we finally found the perfect wedding venue for us. We got a really good deal with the wedding venue. The wedding planner, he was just so awesome. He was so sweet. He helped me design like the flowers, the table, because it was gonna be a smaller party. We we're gonna have the most awesome, awesome wedding buffet. But we're gonna have so much good food. Aside from the food, I found a mariachi band in Japan. Him and we were planning to have them come and sing a couple of songs. We were gonna have a poker table. We were gonna have karaoke. I was just, I was gonna do so much. Because it was gonna be a smaller party, I put more money into the entertainment. Yuji and I were taking dance lessons. We were gonna have our first dance together. But I still wanna have this party. <laughs> um, everything was falling into place, but then like, I think it was around, what, mid-February? So right around February, people started talking about the coronavirus. It wasn't a huge deal yet. Numbers started growing a little bit in Japan and that's when they shut down the schools. My work ended early. I started to have more conversations with my guests that were coming, my family, my friends, and I started talking and like, are you guys still coming? Are you still coming? It became like an every other day conversation. And then it happened. My guests started canceling and I got my first cancellation. Well, I'm working on my coronavirus vlog. My friend's about to call me. So let's see what the update is and whether or not she's coming to the wedding because this coronavirus got me up. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, but it is really heavily affecting a lot of people's travel plans. Um, people's weddings, big events, graduation ceremonies, Olympics. Um, it's no joke. It's I, I giggle here and there because it's like, I guess that's just how I process sad information by making jokes. I guess you'd say I'm the Chandler. <laughs> I make jokes in uncomfortable situations and that's kind of me. But anyways, we'll see what she says. She's about to give me a call. Uh, and it's not going to be good news. I know it's not. Hi. So, how was that? But Yuji and I still had to power through and continue with planning our wedding because everything just, we just had to continue on because we didn't know what was going to happen. Babe. Hmm. What? You see? What do you think? Oh, you look nice. I like mm. it. Let me see. Oh, I really like that one. What do you think? I like it. You like it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's not as bad as I thought. Yeah. Oh, I have it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks nice too, babe. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah? Yeah, it looks really good. We just finished um, Yuji's tux appointment. Today's a really important day for us because we have a lot of wedding stuff going on. Um, of course, we're really stressed out about stupid freaking coronavirus. So any Japanese couple that's getting married here, like it's a trending topic on Twitter, hashtag Corona wedding. A lot of couples in turmoil and uh, just stress about whether or not they should postpone or cancel their wedding. And if they postpone or cancel, will the venue charge them? So there's a lot going on. Also, when we were up there trying on Yuji's tuxes, I asked the, the, what is it, bridal stylist? I asked the bridal stylist if she could show me my dress again because I started feeling I made the wrong choice. And she showed me my dress and I looked at it and I just, I was just not happy with it. So um, she made some time for me to come in uh, around one o'clock. Now it's around 11 o'clock. I'll come back around one o'clock and change my dress. So we're gonna go, come back, change my dress or find another dress. And then we're off to the wedding venue to have a discussion about Corona issues. So yeah, today is a very busy day. So I, 
already mentioned about how the venue gives you a wedding package, right? And within that package, it includes the wedding dress. These wedding dresses are really beautiful. They have wedding dresses that fit within the budget of your package. And if you wanna pay a little bit more, you can get a little bit of a fancier dress. But the big problem was the wedding dress actually fitting me. And I consider myself to be a pretty normal body type for American standards. I'm a size six, size eight. These dresses, they didn't fit me. None of them fit me. They have a workaround for this type of issue if somebody has a little bit of a bigger body type. They put like a piece of fabric and they kind of like rig it to make it look like it fits you, but it really doesn't. It's really not what I wanted and it just, it's not a really good feeling. You guys might remember, I went on a wedding dress shopping trip back in Los Angeles and I found the dress that I loved. I, nothing came close to that one that I found in Los Angeles. And I was just like, oh, it was such a pain in the ass. You are not allowed to bring in a wedding dress at these wedding venues. You have to choose a wedding dress from the salon that they are working with. In the contract that you signed that you will not bring your own wedding dress in. Can you believe that? I continuously express my concern to my wedding planner, dude, my body is not gonna fit in these dresses. Are you sure? Are you sure? I really can't bring my dress in. Are you sure? This is very frustrating for me. I tried on a lot of dresses. It wasn't fun anymore. So what I had done is I found that dress and I found it on a used wedding dress shop. The person who was selling it was in the UK. Mariana was in the UK at that time. She picked it up for me and she was going to bring it before my wedding. I was going to find a way to wear my wedding dress at my wedding. What can they do? What can they do? Like if like I go and I bring my dress and I say, I don't want to wear that dress. I want to wear this dress. Like what can they do? Are they not allowing me to have my wedding? I don't think so. So then after that, we went to the wedding venue to talk to my wedding planner. We just needed to talk a little bit more about what was going on and what was happening. And it was a very emotional conversation for me. I did not expect it, but I started crying. The funny thing is, is that the wedding planner, bless his heart, he was just so sweet. He started crying. And then as soon as he starts crying, I'm like, I stopped crying. I'm like, are you okay? <laughs> and he just clearly expressed to me how much he wanted to have our wedding because it was so unique. So he was really looking forward to it. He was just having a hard time in his job. I'm sure that's why he started crying. Like I, 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 I did not expect him to cry. So we left that meeting with the conclusion of if my guests were unable to attend, we could either choose to cancel or postpone the wedding. As long as I had the choice of canceling or postponing where I wasn't losing out on all the effort and work that we had put into planning and the money that we had saved, I was okay. I was gonna be okay. So I went from this high of, yes, it's gonna happen. We're gonna make it happen. And um, everything was gonna be okay. I had my dress sorted out. I had Yuji's tuck sorted out. Planning was sorted out. Everything was sorted out. So I, I went back on this high of feeling optimistic about everything working out. And right after that, my dad calls and he breaks the news to me and he says, I'm so sorry, honey, it's not happening. We can't come. Uh, we're not gonna be able to make it. It's, everything is just all over the place right now. Uh, so I felt so defeated at that time. Of course I understood. Of course I understood why all my guests were canceling. Of course I understood. Yeah, I was sad, I was bummed. I told some of my friends and even my family, I said, I totally understand, but I just need some time to myself right now. And most of my friends understood and my family understood. But Yuji and I still had a plan to go to City Hall uh, to do our paperwork and still register as a married couple. We're still gonna get married because we don't know what's gonna happen and we just have more security if we're like legally, officially married. Leave it all behind. Dun, dun. Let it all go. It's <laughs> not worth it anymore. It's so cute. I can't convince them to change their minds. Going outside. Whee! 
Do I call your husband now or do we wait to the wedding? You're home. I don't know what to do. We still did get married and we still hadn't had a wedding though. And I still really wanted a wedding. So the next part of this video is Yuji and I actually eloping and getting married. So if you guys want to see that video, please make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.